Hello, my name is Barbara Lloyd, and I want to share with you some of the observations and reflections from my research with faithful and lively congregations. In the news, on television, on the internet, and in our papers, Canadians are bombarded with tales of tragedy and horror from around the world and close to home. It's no wonder that many of us feel a persistent sense of fear in our day. And fear sells. It sells everything from household alarm systems to bigger and better military equipment. Fear in the school system, in the marketplace, in our urban areas often leads to conflict and promotes unhealthy forms of competition. It also breeds distrust of others on our streets and in our neighborhoods. We learn to fear strangers, suspect our neighbors, and keep to ourselves, just in case. Unfortunately, this protective reaction leads to its own problems. Minding one's own business means that some suffer silently, cut off from neighborly support, or that violence and hostility erupt behind closed doors. Communities can be mere geographic locations or they can be organic, dynamic tapestries of people living together and depending on each other. Congregations can suffer from this same kind of self-imposed isolation too, leaving people with real concerns, feeling both unwelcome and unsafe if they ask questions or challenge the way things are done. In the time of Jesus, there was much to fear from the Roman Empire and those in the neighborhood who acted as informants out of expediency. But the threats and risks didn't limit him from healing strangers who confronted him, or from making and building strong friendships with people like Mary, Martha, and Lazarus, and becoming more fully human in the midst of a very loving community of disciples. What seemed to guide Jesus was a rock-solid faith in the power of love. In the new commandment, Jesus calls us to love God and to love our neighbors as ourselves. In the early church, that loving took the form of sharing material possessions for the good of the whole community. Deep loving helps us find our people and moves us to acts of justice-making for the sake of others and the earth. Love challenges our fear-based society. Getting to know our neighbors, sharing our joys and concerns, asking for and offering help are practical steps to countering our fears about those who seem different. Creating safe spaces to share our doubts and concerns, as well as our triumphs and joys, helps to build security, safety, and true community. The faithful and lively congregations I studied seemed open to the Spirit as they took chances in their loving. They were open to journeying with friends, with neighbors, and with strangers. They felt blessed by the chance to accompany and be with others on personal journeys of pain and loss. Their love took different forms, like a bale of straw, a cup of tea, or a listening ear. These congregations showed their loving spirit through building strong Christian community, through loving across differences, through acts of compassion and support, and by meeting challenges in love. Through their love, they became a means of grace, embodying the presence of Christ in their communities. In the conversations that follow, I encourage you to consider how your congregation might be more open to the Spirit by loving in ways that are both practical and profound.